Fear Not, Episode 68. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. Hello, everybody. Today, you and I are going to be joined by Anthony Buto. Hello, Anthony. How are you today? Good. How are you, Billy? I'm doing really well, thank you, and and thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Anthony is an author and personal health coach with a passion and purpose to help men and women become stronger individuals so that they can have more confidence, self-worth, and happiness in their lives. He's also the founder of Journey Evolution, a website and personal brand dedicated to helping people become the best version they can be through a process of education, engagement, and evolution. His recently (laughs) published book, Self-Evolution, Break Free and Discover the Real You, helps individuals who are feeling lost, without direction or purpose, or who may be lacking motivation and desire looking deep down within themselves and approach difficult questions, questions that they have been putting off their whole life. Anthony, can you take a few moments to fill in the gaps and maybe also give us a brief glimpse of your personal life, please? Great. Thank you, Billy. Um, So I recently, probably about a little less than a year ago, uh, began my my journey of self-development. And that's when I immersed myself in um, positive mindset, awareness, self-awareness, mindfulness. Um, But prior to all that, I lived many years of fear-based thinking. You know, I, I settled for relationships that were not healthy. Um, they were not nourishing. Um, I, I lived in fear of, of change, fear of the unknown. Um, so it, it was through all those many years um, that I finally got to a point uh, where I said, you know what, enough is enough, and I need to make a change. I need to take responsibility for my life. Um, so once that happened... I, it's it's like I've experienced what I have to call a rebirth, um, and that's just you know seeing through crisis you see your other self, and ever since then I've just been moving forward, learning more about myself and about the people around me and about life in general. Anthony, can we start off today by you helping us to understand what fear is from your your point of view? Ah, oh, fear, you know. Most people think of fear as this, you know, scary thing. Even the word fear, when you, when you tell people the word fear, they, they get this, you know, anxiety, this stress, this worry. Um, but I actually have come to found out that, that fear is actually a tool. It's actually a, a, a benefit. Um, it's, it helps you find your personal power. Um, and I, I only was able to find that until I actually embraced fear. I, I learned to understand it. And instead of making it my worst enemy, I made it my best friend. Um, and it's through fear that we grow. And, you know, that is one of the key things people need to take away is um, fear is there to serve you. Fear, fear is there to help you. Um, so it's not as scary as people think. So what can we do to flip it around and use fear to our gain? Right. So for me, just to give some examples, I mean, Um, many years ago, I mean, I had the spectrum of of fear. I mean, if if there was a a platinum package of fear, I had it. I mean, I I had all of the channels of fear, you know, fear of the unknown, fear of criticism, fear of rejection, fear of failure, you know, and until I was able to actually look at those and scratch the surface level, I mean, for example, if you take fear of criticism, you know, when you scratch deeper, when you go a little bit deeper, you know, one or two, three levels deep, and you understand, well, what exactly am I afraid of? You know, who or what criticism am I afraid of? And until you actually understand who you are, what your values are, what your beliefs are, your true self, 
that fear slowly dissipates. You know, and even when it comes to fear of rejection, you know, when you know who you, who you truly are, you know, th- those people that you are fearing will reject you. Well, those are probably people that you don't want in your life anyway, you know. And for me, before I even knew this, I was drifting. You know, I didn't have a purpose in life. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know who I was. So all of this stuff kept me paralyzed, you know. And when you avoid fear, it only makes it stronger. When you stay in your comfort zone, you know, that that warm place that you feel secure, that you feel like nothing can harm you because there's no new or unfamiliar challenges. When you stay there, fear is quietly and strategically building a wall around that comfort zone. It's getting stronger. And the funny thing about the comfort zone is when you avoid fear, it doesn't go away. It actually causes you more anxiety and stress. And like personally, that doesn't sound comfortable to me. So, you know, until you're able to finally step out of there, step out of that comfort zone, face the fear head on and start to challenge it and take back your personal power, that's when the growth happens. That's when all the good stuff happens. So it's just acknowledging that, you know, fear is actually there to serve you. Um, And the initial reaction of fear, once you break through it, once you take that first step, your confidence begins to grow. You challenge that fear. You take away its power and you, you boost your own personal power. You mentioned that one of the keys to successfully not, you know, necessarily react to the fear of criticism is to know yourself. How does one get to do that? Where do you get, how do you get to that point where that you're confident and you know yourself so that you aren't shakable? Right. Well, that's, that is where my journey led me to, you know, after years of living a life Um, that I wasn't necessarily happy with um, and and dealing with people that weren't necessarily, you know, fulfilling my happiness. You know, I was looking for happiness on the outside as opposed to looking internally. You know, I was looking for happiness either through a relationship or, you know, through um, a friendship or something external, whether it's a materialistic thing. Uh, Until I turned inward, And actually, that's one of the the main things I talk about with the the book that I wrote is finding out who you are, understanding, you know, what your values are and are they in alignment with your life now? You know, what are your beliefs? You know, what are your passions? You know, if you think about most people, they they go through life drifting, not really knowing who they are, what they want. Um, So until you can look within and actually just take the time to, to realize, you know, what are those things that that you believe in, that drive you, that motivate you, can you really find out who you really are? Is that authentic self, that true self? I know that uh, a big part of your work is journaling. I'm assuming, I'm sitting here thinking that that probably has a lot to do with how to keep track of these things. So could you possibly talk about journaling and how we might be able to use that as a tool to overcome fear? Oh, that's a great question, Billy. So for journaling, it helps you to write out your fears because this way you could see it in tangible form. You could see it in front of you and they become real, you know, and the avoidance factor, it's, it goes to zero because, you know, you're able to admit and accept what those fears are. You can then look at understanding what they are, where the root is and pulling out that root. You know, it's like, it's like a beautiful lawn that has a weed. You know, if you turn away from that weed, it's going to multiply. But if you're able to grab it and rip the root out and find out what the cause is, that's how you, that's how you solve it. And by, by journaling, and I, and I do this every day, I, I, write, I like to write out what my fears are for the day, even just for the day, or the obstacles I'm facing. This way what I know, this way I know what I need to face and challenge for the next day forward. And actually, the, the journal that I just created, the Evolution Journal, that actually helps people change their lives one day at a time because it, it's not looking about, you know, five years ahead, ten years ahead. It's just one day at a time. It's one step at a time. Um, so by writing everything out, you just see it in front of you. You can acknowledge it, you can accept it, and you can move forward. 
Anthony, could you maybe explain a little bit more for, especially for us of those who may not be quite so familiar with journaling, how does one approach that? I know that you've mentioned that you do it on a daily basis and that you journal your actual fears on that day, but is there something else that maybe we need to know in, in that uh, about that process? Um, that's a great question, Billy. Thank you. Um, I think for journaling, it's important to be able to write down those fears and be able to see them in front of you. I think when you're able to see them in front of you, you can at least acknowledge that they're there. You know, it, the avoidance factor drops, you know, and, and, you, and you see what you're actually facing. You know, what is it that you're scared of? What is it that you're afraid of doing? You know, and once you're able to do that, once you're able to see it in front of you, see it staring back at you, you can then slowly begin to look at it, take action, and move forward. Because, you know, a lot of people, they have fear, they're afraid, they're, they're scared, but they're not really sure of what. And they don't take the time to, you know, make a checklist or write those things down to be able to look back at them and say, okay, yep, I understand this, I'm fear of rejection, well, I've been dealing with that for many years, but they don't really, they don't take the time to analyze it enough to the point where they can ne- then take action to, do, to, to move forward. What else could you share with us today that might help, you know, change our mindset and how we look at fear and, and move forward with our lives? Well, I think one of the greatest things about our mindset is that we get to choose what we think. You know, a lot of people don't even, don't even realize that. They, they get to choose, you know, the thoughts in their head. Um, so I, an exercise that I like to do, I, I usually tell my clients this, is, you know, on a daily basis, just have a, have a list. And in, on one column, you have just positive energy thoughts. And in another column, have negative energy thoughts. And throughout the day, just keep track of, of what those thoughts are as you, as you move through your, through your day. And even make it a game. You know, see who wins at the end of the day, at the end of the week. You know, and just be curious about it. There's no judgment. It's not a test. It's just to see, you know, what thoughts are going through your head and then, you know, finding the cues and triggers that lead to those thoughts because once you're able to change your mindset, you change your life. Okay, I think people get stuck in a certain way of thinking and they don't think that they can actually change that. Um, so that's why I do a lot of work on, on recognizing what, what they're thinking and how they can change that in a positive way. Fear seems to be a very broad term, right? And a lot of people don't always necessarily associate things like anxiety and stress and worry as being fear. That's not really the case, is it? They're, they're pretty much all the same thing. Well, right. Well, so actually fear um, and anxiety and worry, they're all tied together. I mean, fear is kind of you know, the igniter. And then once, you know, a person becomes scared and afraid, their anxiety kicks in. You know, it's that fight or flight mentality. You know, it's, and when you think back about, you know, that, that theory of flight or fight, that is from, you know, the caveman times, you know, running away from, you know, a lion or, or a bear or anything like that. But in the real world, in the modern world, it, it becomes what I like to call um, the worst case scenario syndrome. And, you know, when you let fear hold you down, that anxiety, that stress, it builds up. And you just begin to think of the worst case scenario. And over time, it just gets worse and worse. So I actually, I like to tell my clients to, when they're experiencing that, to think about the worst case scenario, the best case scenario. And what usually happens is something in the middle, right? You know, and come to find out that whatever they thought was the worst that was going to happen, it's clearly not even close to that. It's actually better than they expected. Um, and that definitely helps them get over that, that worry, that stress. It w- there wasn't anything to worry about at all. You know, 90% of the negative things that people worry about, less than 10% of that actually happens. You know, <laughs> so it's just, you know, recognizing the thoughts um, and the illusions that you create within your own mind um, and moving past those then you could slowly, you know, make fear a positive instead of a negative experience. Anthony, if someone would like to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? 
Oh, they could just uh, head to, over to my website. That's journeyevolution.com. I have my blog on there. I have a bunch of other things on there. You can uh, grab my book, my journal, or you can also connect with me there too as well. And what parting advice would you like to leave with us today? I challenge people that if it scares you, if you are afraid, challenge it, face it, embrace it. Know that it's there for your personal growth. It's there for you. Accept it and just take action. And I'm telling you, it'll be worth the effort. That's really excellent advice, and and thank you for sharing that. And I also want to let everyone know, too, that Anthony has generously donated uh, a copy of his book and journal, uh, a complete set, to be given away. So if you'd like an opportunity to win that set, visit the giveaways page at livingbeyondyourfears.com and submit your free entry form today. Anthony, I, I really want to thank you for coming on the show and sharing today. Thank you, Billy. It was excellent. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a life beyond our fears.